This wasn't a good one, man, but the Knicks started off well. Knicks in Atlanta for game three of the season series against the Hawks. The rivalry renewed, the fake rivalry. And Knicks shot out the gates hot, man. 71% from the field, the Knicks shoot in the first half. Neither team wanted to play defense in this one. But in the second half, it was the Atlanta Hawks pouring it on, man. Absolutely destroying the Knicks in the second half with a series of runs. Atlanta outscoring the Knicks 37 to 23. Trey Young, DeJounte Murray cooking, having their way with this Knicks backcourt. No Mitch, big problems, man. So we got to talk about it because the Knicks lose 139 to 124 in Atlanta to the Hawks. This is KFTV Post Game Live presented by Manscaped. CP the franchise. Alex Ritaros, the Tratacaster on the ones and twos. So to everybody in the chat, man, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Let's talk about it, man. Brutal. Mitch, we need you, man. You know, you know that, that Wolverine meme that everybody throws around the internet? You mean the one I just posted today? Oh, I didn't see that one. So there it is. We, we need it because... Um, this game was the Mitch effect right from the start. And we talked about it yesterday on, on yesterday's show, how this team was going to be impacted without Mitchell Robinson. The pick and roll defense will be compromised. Offensive rebounds, second chance points, his ability to box out. Points in the paint, opposing, opposing points in the paint. Without Mitchell Robinson, the Knicks were compromising these areas, and it shined brightly in this game, man. Knicks number two in the league in opposing points in the paint at 40, averaging 45. They give a 45 on average. The Hawks scored 60 points in the paint tonight. 60 points in the paint, and give them credit too, man. I thought DeJounte Murray was outstanding Every time he, ju he jumped in the paint, whether whether the Knicks played good defense or bad defense, he was just having his way. The, the, the length, the wingspan that he has with that turnaround jump hook, it was just automatic tonight. He was great. Give him his credit. There was nothing they were going to do to stop him. Trey Young pouring it on as well. So 60 points in the paint for the Hawks. The Hawks winning the second chance points battle. Knicks number one in the league in second chance points. Not tonight. Hawks winning 23 to 13. Getting after it on the boards. And so as a result, the Knicks lost the rebounding battle as well. So that was tough. Absolutely tough. And this, as I said, despite the fact that the Knicks shot 71% from the field in the first half... They only had a, a three-point lead to go into the halftime. So that was just going to show you their defense was not up to snuff either. And then when this game started in the third quarter, it just started so wacky. And, and you know, Grimes had a nightmare game. He starts off the third with a bonehead turnover. Comes back on the other end, and they call him for a brutal, absolutely ridiculous, flagrant foul. And so that was basically a five-point swing, which turned into an 11-0 run by the Hawks. But nevertheless, the Knicks were able to get back into this game because there's three guarantees in life out. Death, mm. taxes, and Julius Randle cooking the Hawks in the regular season. Mm. And he did just that. They had no answer for him. He was filleting everybody. John Collins, I don't see the hype in him. DeAndre Hunter, Capel, doesn't matter who they had on Julius. He was flaming everybody. So Julius was able to get the Knicks back into this game and get them a one-point lead in the second, in the, in the the into the fourth quarter. But once again, no defense for the Knicks as the Hawks shoot out to a 17-3 run in the fourth. Trey starts going in. You had DeAndre Hunter start hitting shots. Bogdanovich, who was ice cold in the first half, was red hot in the second half. Okongu getting them second chance opportunities. And before you know it, man, this one was done. Tibbs waves the white flag with three minutes left. Something you don't see every day. No, Nick's, you don't. Going, Nick's going to the bench early. So, unfortunate, but it is what it is, man. 139 to 124. Nick's lose, bro. Your thoughts? I mean, you touched on it. Prior to breaking down the game from what you saw tonight, no Mitchell Robinson, 
this is going to be a gruesome three plus weeks without him, man. I mean, you just see it. Ian Begley wrote about it today, right? You, with Mitch on the floor, the net rating is plus 8.2. With him off the floor, it's negative 1.2. The plus 9.3 mark is the best among the Knicks rotation, as Ian Begley pointed out. And you saw it tonight. No rim protection. All right. The rebounding. It was okay. It wasn't as prominent as we used as we're used to. No second the second chance opportunities. Big. No Mitchell Robinson. So you, everyone had to make their shots. But you know what? Like when you go down a guy, I'm expecting this to be the next man up mentality. Jericho did the best that he could out there. All right. But the team as a whole has to be awake when it comes to you're miss you're missing your big uh you're missing your big man. This is a key factor to why you've been successful this season, especially on the defensive end. And I'm expecting you to go down to Atlanta, know that you're missing Mitch, and be hungrier than the other team. The Hawks were not playing defense, CP, yeah. for most of this game. Yeah. We saw RJ just trot in the beginning. He was legitimately trotting. I thought he was jogging at a good pace yeah. to finish some of those layups. When you see that your opponent is not playing that tough defensively, I'm expect, especially a Knicks team that has been, you know, that's transformed itself to have an identity on the defensive end. I'm expecting you to go like 120 percent playing some defense tonight, especially without Mitch. And then on the other side, since they're not playing uh, defense, just attack them offensively every single time. But as we see, as the game unfolded, we went from having solid ball movement, even though the assists are there tonight. The assist are there, but I, that's it, to me. It's kind of inflated because his game just was so high scoring. Yeah, but you know, I'm looking for this. The, the second half there was just little to no ball movement. We went back to the isolation show, all right, mm -hmm. and you can see what happens when Grimes was in foul trouble, all right, because he was going to guard Trey Young tonight, and without that, you know, Quick did his best, but Grimes offers height, more defensive intensity. He's our best perimeter defender, hands down. Yeah. And so with him being in foul trouble, especially early on, two quick fouls, it gives Trey Young the opportunity to get into some rhythm. And the next thing you know, they're able just to blow the doors wide open towards the end. But I thought it was going to be close in the third quarter, I, you know, especially with Julius Randle going off in the third. But some of these, you know, like even though the Knicks let up on the pedal, there are some questionable calls by the refs, especially the one on Hartenstein. Oh yeah, even the one yeah. on Grimes, man. The the flagrant one that was ridiculous. Yeah, but yeah. I'm not going to blame the refs. Nick's got to come out hungry when you're losing somebody or missing somebody, I should say, and snatch this away from the Hawks. Yeah, and and uh, you know I'll, I'll I'll touch on on those two kind of weird calls in in a little while, but um you know you had Dejounte Murray and Trey Young combined for 56 points and 18 rebounds and only one three, and that was a result of just constant dribble penetration and just wreaking havoc off of that i mean like i said murray with those turnaround jump hooks was so automatic and then trey that's the trey effect you know he, he's a three level threat off of that pick and roll and he was pulling out all of his tricks to get grimes in foul trouble and i uh, you know the things just started cascading downhill from there man they things just went downhill from there but a lot of their impact just came off of that dribble penetration, getting the paint touches, getting deep into the paint, and either scoring or the facilitating, and the Hawks getting easy buckets off of it, man. Knicks, the Knicks were the same way. It was the same way mm -hmm. for the Knicks, whether it was Julius yep. or Jalen or, or RJ. Um, it was the same way, and that was why the Knicks were having their way in this game. It wasn't offense for the Knicks. They had it, 124 points. Mm-hmm. They just could not. They offered little to no resistance against this team and give up 139 points in this game. And uh, the second storyline, uh, the bench, you know, because obviously uh, with the Knicks shortening up the rotation and, and needing some help off the bench, quickly did his thing tonight for 5-5 five five from the field, 11 points. Uh, but it was Obi who we were, we were looking for more activity, mm -hmm. more contribution from. I did drop that clip out there on Twitter saying that mm -hmm. the Knicks got to get Obi going. You know, I I, I do I, th I throw those out there to, to, you know, give the team a jolt. You know, a lot of times when I do that, positive things happen. I thought you saw some positive things from Obi tonight. He caught an alley oh, from Jalen. Sure. He was aggressive. He attacked off the basket. Um, three seven from the field, one for one for four from downtown. 
uh, three boards, two dimes. So that that second unit, they had a good run in that second quarter. But in the fourth quarter, when we had the one point lead, it all went away. And they also couldn't counter with anything offensively. And I thought that's basically what changed the game. Yeah, it was nice to see Obi getting into rhythm. I mean, I think for what this entire team needed something to get back into offensive rhythm. So if <laughs> if you need to get right game to find some offense, just yeah. play the Atlanta Hawks, man, right. because they're not they're gonna give a little resistance either. But you know, for a team when you, when you look at the Atlanta Hawks, they're not a great three point shooting team either. They're right. down in the basement with the New York Knicks, and they shot thirty eight percent from the field tonight. Okay, so the one thing that you, if you go if you go back and look at how many shot attempts the Hawks were able to get, they got up a hundred attempts to the Knicks eighty three CP. Yeah, a hundred attempts to the Knicks eighty three. Okay, that was based off of lack of ball control. We saw some poor turnovers from Jalen Brunson, some uh, and uh, and others on the team, mm-hmm. like. For a team that's so good at protecting the ball, it, I don't know what's been happening late, man, but they've been giving up a lot of easy turnovers, which gives opponents the capability to attack and transition, as we saw tonight for the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. And on top of that, now, and it goes back to Grimes being in foul trouble, we don't see that perimeter defense either if you're allowing the Hawks to shoot 38% from downtown, all right? Another bad shooting team this week that we see that's now shot well against us. So the question is, does Tibbs have to change something? Because this drop coverage scheme, all right, everyone's just, you know, giving too much leeway for the perimeter, all right? Maybe they yeah. maybe he needs to have everyone tighter on who's ever up there because we keep weighing other guys uh, put up shots from three and it's not doing anything. Everyone's got to cover too much ground. Uh, j- just to stop this. And, and and if this is the case, especially we don't have Mitchell Robinson moving forward, it's going to get ugly, man. We got some good teams coming up this next week. Everyone's been talking about the upcoming schedule. We got the Celtics next week. We yeah. got the Cavs, all right? We got some tough opponents, all right? We're playing the Brooklyn Nets. We don't have Mitchell Robinson, but you still got Kyrie on that side that you got to look out for, all right? Yeah. So it's not no, it's no cakewalk for the Knicks. And the season's just going to get tougher, too, because we've got the Miami Heat uh, in the latter halfway we haven't see- seen yet. So something's got to change, man. Something's got to change. Yeah, big time, man. And this was this was an important game, right? This was game three of four against the Hawks. Hawks now leading the season series two to one. Hawks gain on the Knicks. Uh, and now they're only a half game back. Hawks in eighth place. Knicks in seventh. Hawks only a half game back. The Hawks have now won five straight, so they are red hot. Knicks got to do some soul searching because they're in Toronto on Sunday. Then they face Cleveland. Then they face Boston. So schedule's getting tough. This is a tough, tough close to January for the Knicks in terms of the schedule. No Mitchell Robinson. They, they're going to have to figure some stuff out, man. They, they're going to have to make some adjustments uh, w- without Mitch because he, he just he covers up so many of their, of their deficiencies. Mm-hmm that right now they don't have much room for error man they, they don't that have toronto game is looking scary honestly yeah because mitch is you know mitch as you said he covers up a lot and the raptors give us a difficult time with their versatility regarding different positions no mitchell robinson and look begley report like begley in his article today they dropped that he dropped hartenstein Negative five point four net rating, worst on the team. Yeah, and, and Tibbs Tibbs speaks so glowingly of the guy. I mean, I I get it. You yeah, don't right. Wanna, you don't want to lose him, but I mean, you, know. you got to be a little bit real too, right? Like, yeah. come on, like we yeah. see it, we see it out there. Tonight was another one, man. Like you just saw, like every time Sims went out, they just saw. It's like they saw food. Yeah, on the defensive side, no question. They're just, they're just able to to attack him, whether it's in the paint. Get rebounds. The only the only guy that that Hartenstein's defeating on the rebounds is Obi. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no question. What is this? Brutal, man. A- absolutely brutal. You know, especially the way that they came out in the first half. Uh, the way Julius played to get them the one point lead in the fourth. I expected it to be tight to to go down to the wire, but when the Hawks started turning it up, the Knicks just just had nothing left, man. They had absolutely nothing left and get washed, especially in the fourth quarter. 17-3 to run, man. 
Oof. Seven and a three one, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP and Alex on the ones and twos, man. A disappointing, brutal loss by the Knicks. 139 to 124. KFTV post game live. Call us up with your thoughts on this team, man. 657-383-1509. Or hit us up on the Knicks Fan TV Discord and kicking us off tonight. I think this is the right time to go to him, man. He's back. Mm. Jose from Puerto Rico. Woo! Here we go. Here we go. Hey, what's up, fellas? Um, Happy New Year and all that other stuff. Uh, This is it, fellas. We reached our ceiling. That's it. We ain't going nowhere. We got a brutal schedule coming up. We got the trade deadline coming up. And who are we going to trade? The guy we traded our our first-round pick for. Thanks, uh, Leon Rose. You're a genius. There's nothing we're gonna do. We got we we gonna it's we got no Mitch. What are we? I mean, you know, there's, there's we got no bench. And then everybody complains that we're overworking. You know, the minute police. Oh, these guys working too much. Yeah, he's on the. Okay, he's got nobody else. What are we yeah. supposed to do? What is Tibbs supposed to do? This is it, fellas. We had a nice run. Yeah. Let's just pray we get into the playing. And <laughs> I don't even see that happen. Mm. Right? We got Brunson. We got, you know, hey, Mr. Dribble had a couple of good games. This and that. We got no bench. We got no future. We got no nothing in the uh, – what are we going to do in the trade deadline? Something embarrassing. <laughs> we get a trade cam ready. The guy we traded our first, you know, uh, you know, first round yeah. pick for, and, and so hall. that you keep him. What are we gonna get? What are we gonna get from? Uh, nah, Whatever. pretty much nothing. Second man. round pick. Yeah, pretty much. You know, so pretty what's, much, the, you know what's, what's the point? Best thing we could do when we're losing, and we're gonna lose, and we're gonna lose in embarrassing fashion. Let the kid play. Give him a few <laughs> minutes. Yeah, go play. Uh, you know, play. Yeah, him. yeah. Every, all, all, all our Knicks fans are going to blame Tibbs and blame this. No one's going to blame Leon. Mm. No one's going to blame Dolan. Jose back. They're only going to blame. I'm telling you, CP, we are going to lose. And we're going to be, we're going to hit that losing streak when this, I mean, are we going to beat the Celtics? Well, look. Or are we going to beat the next, the 76ers? We're not. I mean, look, in, 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 in a make or miss league, Jose, and, and appreciate the call. In a make or miss league, who knows? You know, maybe you catch one of these guys. <laughs> maybe maybe you catch one of these guys on an off night. You know what I mean? Maybe you tip your cap to the Hawks and say, hey, you know what? They made their shots. They got two good mid-range shooters who destroyed the drop coverage. Can we stop? Can we stop with the drop coverage? Can we change the... Look, man, we had a guy with the nickname... Uh... I was on vacation. I yeah. still watched the game while I was down there in Jamaica. We have a guy with the nickname the minivan. Yeah. Saying that why is it why are we playing the old drop coverage? Can we stop? Mm. Can we please stop? Please. Ah it's a tough, just a tough night, man. Tough, tough night, Nick Spanks. Hang in there, man. Hang in there. You know. I know, I know it's it's easy to pile on and with the negativity. Is there anyone who's remaining optimistic out there? Look, you, right? I, look, look. Um, yeah, are, are are they coming back to earth a little bit? Pro- yeah, I still think they're gonna be battling because there's a lot of parity between six and ten right now. So I still yes. think they're gonna be battling between six and ten all year. I said it when I went on with the post the other day. I said they're in six right now. They could be around tenth. But this is why you want to win the season series against the Hawks, the Heat. The Raptors, the Wizards, the Pacers. You got to try to win these matchups, man, because they're, they're going to be key. I hear you on that. And sure, look, you can look at the Pacers. They're without Halliburton right now, right? Um, a lot of teams are dealing with injuries right now throughout the league. So the Knicks are just one of the other teams, right? I know we can get into this mindset of woe is me, but the reality is, CP, is that our defense is taking the hit. The identity of this team is defense. The yeah. offense has been... The offense, even though the numbers are fine, we know that it's very isolation driven, 
But defense is where we were making our bread and butter, especially when it comes to Mitchell Robinson protecting the paint. I'm just concerned when you see tonight, and you got to go up against teams like the Boston Celtics, the, the Philadelphia 76ers, man. I mean, it's Joel Embiid, right? I mean, yes, he's an MVP, but yeah. that's going to be difficult, okay? I mean, we, we we have no chance against Philly even when they're healthy. So, I mean, even when we're healthy. But, this, but, so but still, like, they're, but they're, up, they're up next yeah. on the slate, right? Yeah, they're yeah. up next on the slate. And when you're looking three weeks ahead and you're thinking, what can this team last without Mitchell Robinson? And you see tonight against a team – that's also going through its own issues. The Hawks are going through their own issues. Mm-hmm. They got so we had earlier, not too long ago, uh, the 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 beef between McMillan and Trey Young, right? Yep. So every team's going through something, but when I look at what this team like, it's are they going to be strong enough? Are they going to be gritty enough? I looked for them to do that against the Wizards, to come out hungry after losing a close one to Toronto, because that's another game where you should say, hey, we got to get this one because the season is going to get tougher, right? And especially you don't know what's happening to Mitch. You still got to go in there and go win it the best you can. And And as we said yesterday, it's, it's three weeks at least. And now you know. And now you know three weeks at least without Mitchell Robinson. Yeah. You would, like, there has to be some sort of fire, man. There has to be some sort of fire that, is saying, look, we got to do our best right now and grind. Well, Celtics were out Robert Williams to begin this season, mm-hmm. right? And they made sure they're still number one, but they were out there battling. Yeah. Yeah. Robert Williams is not Tatum or Brown, but they're out there still competing because they're like, look, once we get healthy, we're going to have to still figure out a way to get into rhythm, but we got to get all these wins right now. If we want home court advantage and all this for the Knicks, it's like, if you don't want to be in the plan, if you don't want to be in that, like, you know, I guess unknown of what what other team could show up that night because you only get one chance. You would think that if you want to be in a play a playoff team, every night is critical, and you take each and every single night with some sort of fire. And especially when you lose your guy, mm-hmm. there's got to be some sort of fire saying, "All right, we we were playing at 110 percent." When, with Mitch here, we got to play at 150 now. There, there's yeah. a different level of energy, different level of urgency. That's what we need right now to see from this team. Because if they're just going to keep going out there like this, it's going to be a long three weeks, man. It's yeah. going to be a very uh, long uh, three 100%, weeks. 100%, man. Shout out to Bobby Elliott. Sends a $90 New Zealand dollar super chat. Says salute from New Zealand. Been locked in KFTV for the last four years. Love your work, CP. Got to say, the young players are overrated apart from Grimes and quickly package the boys up for some bench help. Let's go, Knicks, man. Shout out to Bobby Elliott, an OG Knicks fan. We've only been doing this for Mm. six years, so Bobby's been locked in. He's been in the mud with us. So shout out to him. Mm. Shout out to all our guys uh, uh, um, down in the uh, Asia Pacific region, Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, all over, man. Japan, everywhere. Salute, salute to that guy. And uh, and definitely appreciate the uh, the super chat. Shout out to Porter Carroll, ten dollars super chat. Definitely appreciate it, Porter Carroll. Salute. We got hoodies vintage in the building. Five dollars super chat. He says this was a tough one. Hawks hit a bunch of tough shots. Coaching is very bad. Drop coverage got us killed all game, and the zone just sealed the game. That's coaching. Far Pat, five dollars super chat says the Hawks are so locked in. They had a fan hit a half court shot for ten G's, and another fan do a windmill dunk. <laughs> oh man tough one man if you guys were at the game and you guys are watching tonight man call us up let us know uh what you thought let us know the vibes and everything like that and let's get to the discord um dave g dave g on the discord i'll mute your mic what's up cp what's up alex what's going on guys how you feeling bro Going uh, on. You know, I'm irritated. I yeah. like everybody else. Yep, yep. Uh, and and here's what I'm most irritated about. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna go not not like back in time or anything. But I'm mm-hmm. irritated because Tom Thibodeau has a longer leash than he should have because we had a really long good stretch that really had nothing to do with him and everything to do with Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. Like they carried the team during our win streak and our really good December. Really didn't have anything to do with Tom Thibodeau, I don't think. I think he's done a terrible job managing the roster. We have everybody with a brain cell knows that we have no bench help right now, Mm -hmm. besides Manuel Quickly. Obviously, besides Manuel Quickly, like we have six guys that are genuinely 
contributing to winning basketball and everybody else is keeping the team back. Mm -hmm. And you've got Evan Fournier and Cam Reddish sitting on the bench. And I'm not the biggest fan of Evan Fournier or, mm -hmm. or like whatever, like, but you have, well, while, I mean, while he was, uh, he, you know, I mean, he kept reiterating on the, on their post game show without even saying the name, because you know, they, they got to keep it real hush mouth and real mushy in there to keep, they got to keep it, keep it clean. Yeah. But while he, you know, was, was kind of saying, we got to get Fournier back into the rotation. Like you've got one of the most, one of the best three point shooters in the NBA sitting on your bench making eighteen million dollars a year, and yes, he's a trash defender. I get it. Mm -hmm. That's your job as a head coach to put him in a lineup to hide that and to get the offense that you need from him, because right now you've got no bench offense. There's no way that you can't bring Cam into your offense or to your office and say, Cam, look, I know this isn't the role that you want, but I want you to just be a 3 and D player off the bench, be a hellacious defender. You're 6'8", super athletic, ridiculously talented. Like, I know you want to be a superstar, but we don't have that for you right now. Do this, and then we'll talk about that in the future versus just, ah, I don't want to play him. He's not my kind of guy. I'm going to sit him on the bench. He's just going to get DNPs all the time. While you got guys out there just getting torched yeah. all day on the bench. It's And he has too long of a leash Leon is too buddy buddy with him. The only way this team takes a massive step forward is obviously if we get a superstar, but that didn't happen. Yeah. And you get a new head coach. And I'm not saying Johnny Bryant's the guy, but I'm saying there's a lot of coaches out there that could coach this roster way better than Tom Thibodeau is. I'm not a yeah. Debbie Downer. I still think we're going to have a great season, but I think it's more so to do with Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson playing really, really well. Yeah. I think that's what we're relying on is just if yeah. they're – on it and the defense is okay for a night then we might win a game but if they're not then we're basically screwed so yeah i mean we'll see what happens at the trade deadline i mean there's pieces to move we've got picks we've got all this sort of stuff like the front office better make some intelligent moves or else i don't, I don't know what the rest of the season holds but i hope you guys have a great night go next, baby. It. you too man appreciate it appreciate the call yeah man um yeah, while you know, Wally Wally was basically saying uh they should have went to forty eight. Mm. Or they should consider going to forty eight. And even Cam. You know. At what, po at what point was uh Wally saying this? Was this in uh post game or post game, post game. He said it okay. a couple of times. Mm. Said it a couple of times. which mm. I, I found to be interesting. That it was just a very see the thing is is that I agree. I don't like how the rotations is just locked because I don't think this team is good enough to do that. But the second unit had it going in the second quarter. Yes. So what you were looking for in that fourth quarter, like, hold it down for like four minutes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Hold it down for like four minutes and don't let this thing get out of control. And they just couldn't, they couldn't do it. You know, they, they could not do it. Um, and so, I, you know, it, it's a tricky thing. You go to a 48 there and say, hey, you know, give me a couple of minutes. I, I don't know, man. It's tough because case in point, they are, they're up one when the quarter starts. And by the eight minute mark, they're down by 10, they're down by 12 already <laughs> within those four minutes. So, I mean, it was really the offense, or was it that they couldn't get a stop? And if they couldn't get a stop, then Fournier Dam sure ain't helping us in, the, in, that, in that department. No. <laughs> no. So, I don't know. Look, 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 but like I said, I, I, I get the issues with the rotation because I have it myself. I don't like why this thing is just, like, locked when they're not that good. But, hey, th this is how the coach wants to run it. My thing when it comes to Tibbs and, you know, I've, I've given his compliments. I, I've said what I've like, what uh, I'm irritated against. The thing is the lack of offensive creativity. And we see that with the second unit. Uh, even if you include those guys, is he going to give them enough time to burn to get into some sort of rhythm before pulling them out? I mean, we can look at the game tonight, you know, we just look at the minutes and, Sure, you got a top one with 16, Hartenstein with 17, McBride 16, quickly with 36, but that's because Grimes was just in foul trouble. But a lot of those minutes came with garbage time left because the team was out of it. 
Yeah. So is he going to give those guys enough minutes to actually get into some offensive rhythm? I mean, we saw the last couple of games, right? Top and asking top and had four touches, you know, shout out to, to, to Benji over at Nick's film school. He, he, he showed, he talked about it on Twitter today or, or yesterday where top and only had four touches in his nine minutes. So is he, are the, are you going to give them, are you going to plan something for them? Are you going to plan some sort of offense to get them all into some sort of rhythm? You know, and it goes back to even like Begley's article where, or, or even the report where it's like the theory was he would bring some offense and passing, but we're not utilizing him that way. And whose fault is that if we're not utilizing him that way? Mm. So we can keep saying, do we bring Fournier in? Do we bring Reddish in? Do we bring Rose back in and all these other guys? But is Tibbs actually going to put the effort into getting some sort of offense going that's outside of isolation, read and react? Because when I see that second unit come in outside of quickly, who has the green white, everyone is just kind of, you know, floating around trying to figure out where do they fit in. And like, thankfully, Brunson was out there with Toppin to help get him going, you know, but that's not the case all the time. Brunson's not Brunson and Obi don't play that. Like, actually, I got to get the minutes. I won't say that. Mm. But I feel like, but I feel, and I need to, I really need to go check this. I feel like we don't get enough of that, of that pairing to let Obi have another point guard or if it's not quickly, yeah. someone to get him going. They, they did it goes for him. all around. They, they did t- get him. Uh, he did have the Julius Obi pairing with Brunson late in the game. Um, wasn't for that that long. So again, we'll we'll see we'll see if they do go to that for for longer minutes. As as Phil Tibbs is, always says, we got to take a look at the film. So they'll take a look at the film and see what's up. Shout out to the Ryan Animal Chuck D man, ten dollars super chat, and our, our OG. If you guys haven't been seeing him in the Mosh chat, he's over there in the UK getting a popping. He said he raced home off the plane to catch the worst. I go to London and back. I come back to Mitch being gone. We go to Swamp Defense and YMCA waiting pool. It even looks like we. It even looks weird seeing Cam still on the sidelines. Help in capital letters. Shout out to the Rhyme Animal Man. Glad you got back safe. And yeah, th- things have certainly changed since you left, man. Things have certainly changed. Uh, let's go to the Discord. J Two Cool, J Two Cool in the Discord. I'll mute your mic. J too cool. Hey CP. Hey Alex. Hey, how you doing, man? What's your, what's what your name? Where you calling in from? Oh, uh, my name is uh, Jalen. I'm calling from uh, just left from the uh, arena. Okay, okay. I, 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 well, this, despite the loss, man, how was the vibe, man? Uh it was uh, the vibe was good. You know, got there, better to see the team shoot around. Everybody was jumping in for both teams, but it was a good vibe, be able to watch the game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was your thoughts but, uh, on the game, man? We gotta talk about, uh, we gotta talk about uh, Tom Thibodeau. Uh, this man, no adjustments. He gotta go. After the second quarter, when Trey Young's on the bench and you see Deontay Murray doing the same play over and over again, I thought I was watching 2K I'm doing some cheese. He just going to the paint, pick and roll, mid range jumper, a floater over Matt Bryant. Yeah. At some point, you would think, hey, let's put Grimes on him. Let's put, even though, let's put Reddish in there. You know, he haven't played it a few times, but mm. put Reddish in there. At least I could, I could see he's tall enough to guard that. Matt Bryant was getting abused on the exact same play in the second quarter and then started the full quarter. Yeah. McBride was getting cooked. Yeah, and I didn't understand the uh, the rotation of Jalen Brunson guarding Hunter. That that was terrible. I, I understand that he didn't want him to guard Murray or Trey Young. Yeah. But all the Hawks realized was give it to Hunter. He got post up, post fade on him, and Hunter hit him with twenty. You yeah, can't put yeah. Brunson. You have a basically a three guard rotation, and all three of those guards cannot guard anybody above six five. And then we're just gonna get cooked on defense because of that. It's tough. It's tough. You know, as much as Jalen is brilliant offensively uh you got to pick your poison there and so you know you, you try to hide him on a hunter who is not as aggressive offensively he will give you some off nights he will you know give you some bricks rather than a, a trey or Dejounte who had it cooking all night and and hunter still got to pop in especially in the fourth quarter so it's tough you, it's kind of like you got to pick your poison there you know yeah it was, it was tough it was the, it was good it was good to see um you know Randall he put up his um thirty two points I believe yeah the offense doing good to that full quarter but I just don't understand beginning the full quarter you see Murray doing the same move 
And instead of, you know, putting Grimes again, I understand he barely played. He was in foul trouble. It's the end of full quarter. He's your, he's your best defender. I don't know why you didn't put why you waited so long to put Grimes in the game. I feel like his yeah. rotations and the, his adjustments are just really really bad, and that's why to me he got to go. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate the call. I, I appreciate it. Talk to y'all. All right, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, they've had they've had some like real tricky situations in terms of figuring out how to get Grimes back into the game, especially in the fourth quarter. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought you know the the game. It was it was a bad it was a nightmare game for Grimes just from start to finish, you know he picks up a ticky tack foul on Trey Trey pulled out all the stops on him he picked mm-hmm. up a a, a a over the back foul on Capella, yep, and then like I said the the flagrant foul that they called on him, it's such a tricky thing with the landing rule but I thought with that I mean what how are you supposed to guard a guy how are you supposed to contest a three. That's what I'm saying. Are, are you just supposed to jump straight up in the air? Now you're supposed to go vertical? You see, are we doing just vertical rules on threes? I, Did you hear I, the analysis, though? <laughs> well, it, it was ridiculous. And and Trey, obviously, he's a good seller. He sells, sells, sells or calls. So he, I thought he extended his leg. Now I thought so, too. Yeah. Now you had the other play, which was completely ridiculous, was DeAndre Hunter driving baseline on Isaiah Hartenstein. Hartenstein goes up vertical and they call a foul on him but it wasn't the baseline referee it was the referee on the complete opposite side of the court i couldn't believe it and it was a late whistle i could not believe it so they forced the knicks to challenge the the play then the the the, the gucci man clone referee comes back and says (laughs) (laughs) he definitely looks like gucci man a a combination between like gucci man and like a ninja turtle it's the good the gucci man clone comes on the mic and says that Hartenstein tripped DeAndre Hunter, causing him to turn. And so the foul stands. It was unbelievable. The mental, unbelievable. yo, the the mental gymnastics to that that I, the the one by Scott Foster for the foul that RJ should have had is like, yeah, there was contact, but yeah. it didn't alter the shot. It's like. What are we? What is happening? Yeah. What is happening around the NBA right now? I, I don't, I don't get it. But those calls tonight, the one on Grimes really irritates me. I can understand if you want to call it a regular foul because you want to say he landed on the, he had his foot under his foot. Okay, yeah. to make it a flagrant one, because he aggressively closed out. My man just has the athletic ability to cover ground by taking a leap. How is that aggressive? This isn't yeah. like what even Grimes experienced against uh, the Warriors where someone's legitimately running under his feet into his space. He legit tried to, and then you have Trey, who's just so good at leaning backwards, extending his foot. It's it's gross, man. The Those two calls, and the one for Hartenstein, who was backpedaling that you're talking about. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm showing was, it right now on, on YouTube for, for the people in the chat to that see. That was crazy. Uh, abysmal. You know, and, and I'm not, again, I'm not the one to say, oh, this was on the rest because the, the Knicks did enough for themselves to lose this game. But yep, this one forced the Knicks to, to challenge it. They lost the challenge and lost the timeout. It, it was crazy. That was the worst call of the night. Grow your worth in the chat, man. He said Gucci was terrible tonight. Terrible. So you know that that was that was uh, pretty ridiculous, and then like I said, the the, the landing foul that they called into a a, a, a flagrant Trey Young that was a three shot foul and the ball back, and Trey Young scores. So that was a five point swing to start the third, and the Knicks were playing from 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 they they were playing catch up from that point. Now, nevertheless, Randall's. Outstanding play in the third. I think he had about 14 or 17 points in the third. Brought him back and got him the lead. And then it all went, it fell apart in the fourth. <sighs> so, the old foot trick, as Clyde would say. The old foot trick. But you see, it's like, for us, when they made calls like that, it really does all to the game, whether or not it's a point or whatnot, but it changes the whole it changes the whole landscape of how players have to adjust, how they play. And this is where I ask for consistency. 
I know it's difficult. I know there's human error when it comes to that, but the justification for some of these calls, man, it's yeah. just, it, it's getting wild. Yeah, it, it's tough, man. It, it is tough, man. But salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP and Alex on the ones and twos. Knicks lose, get washed in the second half against the Hawks, man. 139-124. If you guys are new in the chat, type in hashtag new, and we will shout you guys out. Salute to everybody for, for rocking with us despite a tough loss. We got 1,000 people in the chat. Let's get those likes up. You know, you might want to thumbs down the Knicks, but you got to hit that thumbs up button for Knicks Fan TV, the number one show for the fans, by the fans. Listen to my guy Bobby Elliott from, from down in New Zealand. Been tapping in for four years. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Four years. Let's go. That's love right there. We appreciate it, man. To the phones we go. Kareem from North Carolina. How you feel, man? Hello. Kareem, go once. Kareem, going twice. All right. Uh, I don't know what happened to Kareem. I mean, Edgar, if you're able to uh, to get to him, let us know. Uh, to the Discord, Nate, how you feeling, man? What's up, yeah? How you been? How you been? Good, man. How you feeling, bro? Uh, I'm all right. I'm gonna try to be quick. Um, I I know we all hate Tibbs. I know he's the worst person in New York right now, apparently. Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at a team that objectively has a flawed roster, I don't want to hear complaints about rotations. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I heard the guy talking about Fournier earlier. If we're playing Fournier, Obi, and Isaiah Hartenstein, we're getting cooked. I'm Mm -hmm. sorry. There's nothing we can do about that. So you can complain all you want about McBride being in. You can complain about other dudes, but there's a reason why he makes these decisions. What you can complain about is Isaiah Hartenstein only averaging less than an assist when you average two assists in the same amount of minutes the last two years. Mm. There are reasons to be mad at tips, but we don't have to lie. I'm sorry. Mm. But yeah, that's that's really all I got because it, it's, it's annoying. I got to hear the Cam Reddish people again. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nate is over. Rate that call the chat. One being trash, five being facts. Throw some tomatoes, a fire emoji, or a five in the chat if you are feeling Nate on that one. What are you giving him a five for that last comment? Uh, oh, well, about the Cam hop. Yeah. No, I, I, I would actually, I would actually like to see Cam playing. Mm. Yeah, I would okay. actually like to see Cam playing. I, All I right. Think, uh, I said it from the beginning. I thought, um, again, and this is, you know, people, people who get real sensitive on the McBride topic. You're hating on McBride, and you think you're a talent evaluator. I just don't think he's that good. And, you know, people just think that because you're going to play young kids and develop that they're going to all of a sudden turn into good players. It doesn't work that way in the NBA. Everybody's not meant to shine. Everybody's not meant to be a, a, you know, solid contributor on the team. Maybe he does grow into that. But I think where the Knicks are right now, where they are in building their team, I don't see why they close the door on Cam like that. I think he has better potential, more potential than McBride. Now McBride may give you... Better defensive acumen and awareness consistently every night. Obviously, that, as Nate said, is the reason why Tibbs goes there. But I just don't think that they should have closed the door on the kid. Obviously, there's more to the story. But that's 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 just my take. You know what I'm saying? That's just my take. I just feel like McBride is way too limited offensively, which is what we're looking for this from this bench, to be giving him consistent minutes every night. I, I, I came up with the Thibel, with, with, with the Thibel uh, example the other night. How Philly has mm-hmm. basically exiled a guy from the rotation. This was a guy who was a, he was a borderline starter. Their defensive stopper. But he couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. And you have a similar situation here. Yeah, McBride, he'll get his catch and shoots opportunities. And, and he'll knock one down every once in a while, every, every five games. But we're sitting here talking about the bench. We need upgrades. We need this. We need that. And you lock the door in the rotation with guys that just aren't that good. That's the reality. Mm. But but don't you think that it comes down to also the offensive creativity? Like, I think one, yeah, I hear what you're saying, McBride. Like, maybe he doesn't have that offensive talent where he can go create on his own. But maybe he flows into some sort of offense Maybe like what the Warriors do where it's like, okay, we're going to run these sets to make sure that you get your touches here at this point. We're going to get for McBride. He's a good mid-range shooter, but we don't get him to the mid-range. We don't set enough screens for him. We don't do any of those things for him. So maybe he can offer something offensively. This is where I push back and I say Tibbs 
Where are you with the offensive creativity? It's too much isolation. Even with Grimes, there's just times where we see seven touches, and it's like, come on, man. There That's is fair. more that this guy has that we're just not tapping into. There's just more. And when you when we go from a night for like, okay, look, he's efficient. Three for five hits, well, what, maybe two, three, four from downtown out of those five attempts. And you're like, what if we gave him more? What if we just don't – like we had it one night where it was 29. I think it was against the Raptors. Was it against the Raptors? I think it was against the Raptors. 29 shot attempts for Jalen Brunson, five for Grimes. How is that happening? How are we just isolate? How are we just like closing the door on guys who are on the court that may get into some sort of rhythm if we just That's get some, if we just figure something out? Because there's, there's better options on the team. We're not going to sit around and wait for McBride to go one for I'm six. I'm not asking for that. And build in I'm a brick house. For that, though. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing Jalen Brunson back into the game. Man. I hear you on that. I don't. We but don't, we don't got asking, time I'm to wait around for, for McBride to get to get into a groove. We don't got time for that. The game is moving. Man, well, the game is do moving. If you, we don't got you're, time. You're, 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 you're asking for bench. You're asking for bench help then. You're asking yeah. for bench help, and you're saying, okay, well, if you're going to need bench help, be creative. Go get some offense going for this guy and go figure it out. No one's asking for 20 minutes from McBride to go be uh, the, the hero. I'm just asking for like 10, I see people minutes. in the chat. He needs his minutes. He needs his minutes. We don't got time for that. Then are you – how are you going to say we don't have time for that, but you're asking for – you're saying, we got we to worry about these minutes. Oh, it's 40 Listen. minutes. Oh, get, get, Listen, we man, get the pacemakers for these it's guys. Either you What's happening? Or get off the pot. Oh, brother. Please. <laughs> get 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 an offensive coordinator in here. Please, for the love of God. Get an offensive coordinator in here. I'm tired of watching ISO. <laughs> what happened to the ball movement? Yeah. It was better than the other game. It was better than uh than Wednesday night. Oh, much better than Wednesday night. I mean, it was, we're talking about 14 assists. I mean, they got 20, 20, what, 23, 25 tonight? Let me pull it up. Anything. Um, Anything. Just give me some offense off the bench, CP. That's all I'm asking for. Okay. Is that too much to ask? No, not at all. All I'm saying is it's not going to come from McBride. I mean, simple and plain. I, I don't know. Do I do, do I need to say it in French? Yes. I mean, some of you guys just think because the kid I'm is going to get actually, minutes I'm and minutes and minutes I'm actually, that they're finally going to turn into a great player. Some guys are just not cut out for it. I'm still waiting for you to say it in French. You you now caught my, my friend, attention. <laughs> my French is a little rusty, man. I haven't taken French <laughs> since elementary school. Nixon, no way to find out Super Chat said... Uh, Gucci man said their feet touched. They never touched. NBA got bets against the Knicks. Can't nobody tell me different. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a ridiculous call, man. Definitely appreciate the super chat. Definitely appreciate the super chat. Peter, salute to Peter. Mm. Appreciate the super chat as well. Okay, um, let's take a look at this thing by the numbers, Al. Let's take a look at the stats. Of the night by the numbers, man. And, you know, we, we talked about a lot of this at the opening. Knicks losing the rebounding battle only by five. But what was significant was that the Hawks were able to win the second chance points battle. So even though, you know, the Knicks, you look at it, you say, oh, OK, they only got out rebounded by five. The magnitude of the Hawks rebounds were much greater. Because they had 23 second chance points to the Knicks' 13 points in the paint. Knicks giving up on average 45 points per game in the paint to opponents. They gave up 60 tonight to the Atlanta Hawks. And that was a big difference. And, and like I said, you know, you had 56 and 18 points and assists combined between Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. And only one of those points came from beyond the arc. So they were cooking on the inside and... That was, you know, a, a result of porous perimeter defense as well as paint defense. Knicks shooting 71% from the field by the half, and, and both teams, you know, finished at, at, at a very respectable rate. Knicks 59% from the field, and Hawks 56%, man. So how would you see this thing in, from a number standpoint? Uh, the one that stuck out to me was the 19-point largest lead for the Hawks. <laughs> but... Yeah. The like honestly, like if you look at these numbers, they're not outside of the points in the paint because there's no Mitchell Robinson. 
Like you would be happy with the Knicks getting 27 assists tonight. Like I think the rebounding definitely took a hit. Usually we're in the 40s when it comes to rebounding. You see 34 to 39. Um, that's probably one that really stands out. But other than that, like the free throw shooting is fine. Three point percentage is fine. Field goals are fine. Um, all that is fine. Like it's you look at these numbers, you're like, why is it not so? Why? Wh- how did the score get to this point? But the it's the fact that we gave the Hawks more opportunities to put up more shots. A hundred to eighty three is the biggest thing that sticks out to me for this game, and that comes to one. You know, we had twelve turnovers for the seven, protecting the rock. That's that's where it comes over. That that's where it comes to me. Like Nick's got to be better at protecting the rock. Got to figure out how we're going to get more rebounds without Mitch, and got to figure out how we're going to limit second chance opportunities uh, for opposing teams, which goes back to rebounds. But how are we going to get second chance opportunities now without Mitch? Without Mitch, without Mitch. Yeah. No, no doubt about it, man. And tonight's by the numbers, Al. The key stats of the night brought to you guys by Prize Picks, man. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy uh, for you guys in the chat, man. For you guys that are playing for the first time, go to PrizePicks.com and use promo code KFTV for an instant deposit match. Up to $100. So, uh, you know, if you want to start off with a small amount, let's say you want to start off with $20, they'll match your $20 deposit and you have $40 to play with. If you want to go all in with $100, they'll match you $100 and and you will have $200 to play with, so on and so forth. So that they'll match you up to $100 max. And how you pr- play prize picks, very easy, man. You're going to go in and you're going to choose between two to six players and it's you versus prize picks and the, and the stat projections that prize picks has for a player on a given night. And you're just going to predict whether or not that player is going to do more or less than that number that prize picks has on a given night. So again, very easy to play and you can win up to 25 times your money. Now, another thing that prize picks has, which is really cool, is that on certain days, or like holidays, they'll do like some crazy deals. So tonight's deal of the night, like Taco Tuesday, they'll do a deal. Uh, Christmas Day, they'll do some crazy deal. Tonight's deal, they had Luka Doncic, Al, at 0.5 points. I don't know if he- Easy money. Did you get that one? Oh, you didn't play it. I missed that one, bro. I missed that one. You missed the gimme. They gave you an alley tonight. Luka Doncic with 0.5 points. So obviously I took that one and that was easy. I mean, barring a a catastrophic injury- you know, he was going to get that one. Yep. Luka Doncic uh, scored 34 points. So I got that one. I've been telling you guys about Josh Giddy, man, and how great he's been playing. OKC has been hot. They are in Sacramento right now playing the Kings. I took Josh Giddy with more than 18 and a half points. He has 11 points, and that game should be close to the half, I believe. So I'm trending very well on that one. Now, I, I like to take, obviously, I like to play the Knicks in this game, in this, in this, uh, on my prize pick sheets. And I, I really should have went with Julius with the points because he he's always cooks the Hawks, especially in the in the regular season. The mm-hmm. rebounding number for Julius tonight was at 13 and a half. I thought it was a little too high, so I didn't really want to play it there. And I just figured that, you know, rebounding was going to have to be made up in other areas. And I went with RJ tonight with over six and a half. He been, he's been averaging about six and change and uh and and has hit that number he's hit he's hit the more number I, I believe in three out of his last five games only finished with three rebounds tonight so i didn't hit that one unfortunately another mm. rebounding machine that i did hit on is bam at a bio al i went with bam mm-hmm. with more than 10 and a half rebounds miami in dallas dallas obviously a much smaller team uh bam has been a rebounding machine this year and he finished with 11 so he just got me there and then the last pick al and this is one of the things that you can do with prize picks. You can mix and match sports. What do we got mm-hmm. tomorrow? Giants and Eagles. Ooh. Who do I got my money on? Daniel Jones with more than 45 and a half rushing yards. So my ticket is to be continued. And we'll find out mm-hmm. tomorrow night if CP the franchise comes out a winner and gets some cash, man. How'd you do tonight? All right. So for me. This is how I played the board tonight. My first one I chose, Nets are playing the Utah Jazz. I took Colin Sexton to make more than 
three-pointers tonight. Mm. He did that. Made two three-pointers tonight. Nice. So I won there. I then chose Kawhi Leonard to be more than 36 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. He got 47. So I'm good on that. This I'm not feeling too good about because the game's almost over. But I got Laurie Markkinen. More than 26 and a half points. He's only got 16. That game is about to come to a close, I believe. Yeah, fourth quarter. Ooh, what's it, baby? Six, 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 about six minutes left in the fourth. We'll see what happens. Now, CP, this one, I, I, I'm going sh- to switch it up a bit. I took Kyrie Irving mm. for more than 0.5 blocked shots. Did you know that Kyrie Irving is one of the top five guards when it comes to block shots? I did. I, I did know that. Yep. So he's been averaging some pretty good. He's been averaging more than a box reason recently. So I took one there. There's still time left. He hasn't gotten anything yet. Hopefully he gets one before the game ends. Now the other one I took. You talked about Josh Giddy. I started started to go go with Josh Giddy recently. I took him for more than 34 points, rebounds, and assists. As of right now, he's got 18. Mm. So I'm on I'm good I'm on good pace for that. I'm on good pace for that. All right. So, so still got to wait for things to close out. But as of right now, I got two with Kawhi and Colin Sexton. Hopefully, Wari, Kyrie, and Giddy, just one of them, can help me out so I can at least get three. Nice, nice. And once again, for you people at home, play to win, but play to responsibly. Go to prizepicks.com and enter promo code KFTV for a instant deposit match of up to $100. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get back to the phones. Let's go to um, Christian Mudfoot from BK. Christian, what's going on? Christian, go What's on. going on? Thumbs up for my boys. Let's go. Man, Tibbs got to go. Mm. Tell him why you're mad, bro. Tibbs got to go. Like, I, I, I think he's hurting Cam number one, Obi number two, and even Hartenstein. Harden said, you got this guy in here. Play to his strengths. Why are you trying to turn him into Mitch? We already got Mitch. Why do you want him to be Mitch? Yeah. Let this dude do what he does. Whatever it is, he can pass. He can hit the three. Like, come on. Mm-hmm. Let this dude do what he does. And if you love these guys the way you love them, 40-something minutes a game, you're killing Jalen. You're killing um Julius. Like, it's ridiculous to me. This is the only problem I have with Leon Rose right now. Like, yo, your boy got to understand, like, this can't work. This cannot work like this. Yeah, I hear you, man. Pre- appreciate the call. Tell him why you mad, bro. Tell him why you mad. Here was um, Fred, Ka- according to Fred Katz, our guy Fred Katz from The Athletic. He said, Thibodeau on starting Jericho Sims, he said, I feel good about both guys. Part of it was trying to keep some rhythm with the second unit. It obviously in some ways didn't work out because of the foul trouble Quinton had. He said, uh, Tibbs on why Sims played more than I heart with Robinson out. He said, just the way it is. Part of it, you want both groups to function well. What gives us the best chance to win? And it may change based on matchups. We just like the way that it was going to flow for us. So that was Tibbs. And we talked about that yesterday. I think... I think he will, you know, flip flop on those rotations. But uh today it was Jericho that uh that got to start. All right. Yeah. I mean, I hope he just sticks with Hart uh Sims. Not Hart, sorry. Yeah. Sims in the yeah. starting rotation. Because he's the closest thing that can match what Mitch does. He doesn't do exactly what Mitch does, but it's the closest thing we got. And I think if you want a defensive presence with that starting unit. You gotta leave Sims out there because it's not gonna be Hartenstein, man. Unless we're unless overnight he becomes some sort of offensive guru, does that even make close to some sort of sense? Yeah, but that's not the case. So keep Sims in there, give this team a a chance defensively, and he wants to say you know keeping some sort of rhythm with the second unit. Okay, but what <laughs> I don't even know how to take that one to be yeah. honest with you. But okay, right, right. All right, so we'll see what happens there, man. Uh, to the Discord we go. Toretto on the Discord. Toretto. What's good? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, man. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling in from? I can't hear you, bro. What'd you say? Yo, yo, Steve. 
One more time. Lakewood from Lakewood. Yeah, your your mic is kind of crazy. Are you, are you speaking on a uh, on some sort of like federal device? What are, what are, what are you doing? <clears throat> All right, we we had to, we had to drop him off. This is his setup was kind of crazy. I don't know if he, I don't know, speaking into a wire or something. I'm not sure what was going on with Toretto, man. Calling from the Pentagon? Oh. Yeah, I, no, I don't, I don't know, man. It sounded, sounded, sounded kind of crazy. Well, try, try back. You know, call back, or if you want to call in on the phones, uh, Toretto, you could, you could try that as well, man. We'll, we'll be here and see what's going on. Here was. Um, Oh, let, let's see. If, okay, we got some Nate McMillan uh, sound bites here. Let's let's see it from the coach of the Hawks. I'm looking for some Knicks hat sound bites, but uh, I don't see it up yet. But let's see some um, Nate McMillan sound bites. See what he had to say here. Guys didn't get out to the best start that you wanted, but you finished strong. Just what does it continue to say about the direction that you guys are heading in over these last five games? You know, that's that's a big key. Uh, our starts uh, to the quarter, quarters, uh, the first quarter. Um, as well as the second quarter, uh, offensively we were able to, you know, come down and score. Uh, but defensively, uh, they were lighting us up uh, in that first half and uh, shooting 70% for most of that. Uh, that half, uh, you know, the challenge to our guys was uh, to d up, you know, uh, tighten up the defense, uh, try to hold them under 25 uh, in the third and fourth. Uh, the third, they scored 30, but. The quarter that uh, really matters, uh, the fourth, uh, we held them to 23. The zone was really good for us tonight. And, uh, you know, our guys had a rhythm. I thought they did a good job of executing and attacking uh, their defense. Uh, so we were scoring. We just needed to tighten up uh, defensively. Okay. So that was a little uh, Nate McMillan there. Al, the zone was working for us, he said. The dreaded zone. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Uh, the zone was working, man. <laughs> it's so sad. This, the zone was working, you know? Oh, man. Tough. It's tough, man. When you know, you know. When you know, you know. So Why, man? Why do we have such a hard time with the zone? Yeah. We, we can't shake it. How many other teams have to face? I, that's the question. How many other teams have to face the zone? Are we the only, are we only one of the very few teams? How many other? Teams? That'd be a good stat to look at. Maybe we'll get Max on that, man. Max, if you're watching, well, let's check that out. If, if, is there a number of uh, you know how many possessions or time of possession that we've we've seen the zone, and how would that compare to other teams? Edwin P. Yeah, Edwin P. Yeah, well, well, yeah, we'll try to get the other team sound bites if, if we can, you know, just get get whatever's out there. When some, you know, sometimes these, these guys put these stuff up late. Al, do you see the Knicks stuff? Do we see Knicks post game tips post game on YouTube or anything like that? Uh, check it out. We'll see what's post going it on later. But let me let me let me check right now. Okay. Shout out to uh, KG Seven Fools. Fight out super chat says we need stars. Yep. 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 Yeah, it's a good idea. Get the get the opposing team's perspective. You know, I think you said it was a good idea if we get stars. I was like, yes, it's a good. Oh, idea that's a, yeah, that that would be a great start. Nothing that, yet on the Knicks yeah. YouTube for post game. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and nothing on Twitter either, right? Okay. All right. Have you have you did you hear the Ian Begley sound bite about a potential surge of Baca? Not saying that the Knicks are, are linked to getting yeah, him or let, anything of that nature, but yeah, let's go he to said it. If, well, let, okay. Let's go to it. Let me let me pull it up. So to everybody in the chat once again, let's get those likes up, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Let's um. Okay, here it is. Here's our guy, Ian Begley of S and Y. Here he is on uh, the Mitch impact and well uh, and what could be next for the Knicks. Huge blow for the Knicks, who learned on Thursday they'll be without Mitchell Robinson for three weeks at least after he underwent surgery to repair a fracture in his right thumb. Knicks were very good with Robinson on the floor, plus six net rating, and they were not so good with Robinson off the floor. They were getting beat 
by teams from a net rating perspective. So Robinson, very important for this team on both sides of the ball. Defensively, obviously block shots, uh, but then offensively, the offensive rebounds, they really help the Knicks get open looks from beyond the arc, get second looks, uh, get easy baskets. So really big, big loss for the Knicks. You know, three weeks is a, is a big, big chunk of time, especially at this point in the season when you're approaching the trade deadline. I wouldn't expect the Knicks, though, to, to fold up the tent and start to tank for the upcoming draft. This team is not built that way. Uh, where the organization is at this point, uh, certainly it doesn't seem like a natural pivot point. Now, you have Isaiah Hartenstein, who you signed in the offseason. You have Jericho Sims, who's played well off the bench. Those two will slide in to replace Mitchell Robinson. If the Knicks look elsewhere uh, for options, you know, Serge Ibaka, with Milwaukee is certainly an option if you're looking for a replacement during Robinson's absence. Uh, it could go a number of different ways. Miles Turner, uh, that's a huge trade to make. Uh, and based on the Knicks' current circumstances, uh, it's probably a long shot for them to make that kind of move in the wake of the Robinson injury. Uh, maybe they just look for another veteran center uh, to come in and help be the third string center during Robinson's absence. But again, Really, really big loss for this Nick team. You're going to find out just how valuable Mitchell Robinson is over these next three weeks, four weeks, and longer maybe. We'll see if the Knicks can tread water and continue to try to fight for a play-in playoff spot or if things... Okay, uh, this wasn't the Ibaka soundbite. But anyway, we get the point. Um, but but he did, in another soundbite, say that, uh, you know, Surge could be an option. And then today, it was announced that the Bucks and Surge intend to find a trade partner for him so uh he's washed but if you want an insurance policy okay i guess i don't know might as well f you know see what errol Barron is dealing with i don't know man not gonna make much of a difference let's see who who's do who's doing what <laughs> no i was saying you might as well see what errol Barron is doing then yeah oh. <laughs> er errol Barron, man real knicks fans know the errol Barron hive was real <laughs> errol Barron. Yeah, man. If you were part of the Earl Barron Hive, you're a real Knicks fan, man. Oh, man. Yeah. <clears throat> Jared Jeffries, you know, is he, could Jared Jeffries give us a couple minutes? He just won the Price is Right. What's he doing? He's at home. He's chilling. He's probably driving that new car. You know. He's probably driving that new Corolla around, you know, cruising. Does he fit in that car? <laughs> yeah. Hey. Uh, who, who else should we call up, man? Who else should we call up? Tyson Chandler? Is Tyson around? What was Tyson dealing with these days? Do you know? I know he was on the Knuckleshead podcast. Yeah, we, 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 we could get a couple a couple tip out offensive rebounds. You know, maybe he's still good for that. Just play a little volleyball out there. Just tip it back out. That's it. Yeah. Just tip it back out. You know what I mean? Kurt Thomas is at the garden a lot. I mean, you know, maybe Kurt can suit up. We got Marcus Camby who shows up too. Maybe. You know? And maybe. Get the Camby man in here. Who who else? Uh, who else? Mm. Who, who who else in the chat? Who should who should you get uh, as insurance policy? A Akram in the chat says Hashim the Beat. Ooh. Do, do we go? Do we go call Hashim the Beat? Cole Aldridge. Ooh. <laughs> let's go. Creepy. Let's call Cole, Cole Aldridge up and see what he's dealing with. Oh, man. <laughs> Buck Williams. <laughs> if, and it's freedom. Oh, we can't say that name. Right? No, oh. yeah, we can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't, we can't say that name. He's too hot right now. He's too hot. But he's around. Ronnie you know? Turio? Oh, Roni. Roni was out there in, uh, in, 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 in Paris. Yeah. yeah. Do we call Roni up? Dwight Howard's over in Taiwan. Maybe we call Dwight. Mm. <laughs> of, of all the names we just named, you, you turn your face up at Dwight Howard. <laughs> He's, I don't know. Everything that we've heard about Locker person we just named. I don't know, man. <laughs> he was the youngest person we just named. <laughs> oh, Joe Kim. Joe Kim would make sense. Oh, good grief. You know what I'm saying? Nah, we just got him. <laughs> Joe Noah? Kim. Joe Kim, yeah. We just got him off the books, bro. Let's stop. <laughs> we finally got him off the books. 
<laughs> the stretch provision. Well, let's get him back. Kylo Quinn. Yeah, let's call KO. KO is over in, um, where's KO at? Is he in Taiwan too? Where, where's KO? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I used to live in White Plains. I used to see him all around White Plains, especially in the gym. Okay. Oh, Boogie Cousins. Is now the time to finally bring Boogie Cousins to the Knicks? Mm. Uh, Knicks fans dream. Mm. Oh, wait. A, no, 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 no. I got it. I got it. Because somebody did hit me on Twitter about it today. And I was just like, here we go. We, we just can't get away from this guy. Mo Bamba. Bring ah. in Mo Bamba, man. Ah. Finally, make it happen. A Knicks fan's dream come true. Harlem world's own I'm about to Mo say Bamba. Harlem's very own Mo yeah. Bamba. <laughs> yeah. That, this is the time. Go get Mo Bamba. Let's Over under it. how many times the song Mo Bamba will be played in the garden if we had him here? <laughs> By the organist. <laughs> By, the, <laughs> By the organ guy. Yeah, he's nice with it too, man. He's nice with it. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. All right. That that's enough uh reminiscing about uh the the the, the bad old days. Let's see. David Lee. He might be out there. We could, man. We could. We could, man. All right. Let's uh let's hear from Toretto to he said Toretto's back on the Discord. Toretto, what's yeah, going on? Yeah. It was good. Yeah, how you feeling, man? What's your name? Where are you calling it from? Toretto from Lakewood. Lakewood, Florida? Or New Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. Okay, what's going on? Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, I, don't, I called on Monday for the first time. You weren't there. I spoke to Alex. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we got to drop you off again, man. Your connection's not good. You, you're talking like you're in the library, bro. We got to cut you out. Call, call in on the on the on the regular phone lines, man. HF, bro, go ahead and un- unmute your mic. Uh, sorry, there's any background uh, noise. I'm handling my newborn right now. She's pretty upset about the Knicks loss no tonight problem. as well. No problem. Dad, dad life is a great life, man. Do you think? Oh, for sure. So a couple things I noticed tonight. Um, what's interesting, I don't think it's time to, to, to push the panic button just yet. Uh, Sims, you got a third string center getting thrust into the, the starting role. Mm-hmm. You know, Nick's, Nick's center, that, that's kind of like our defensive anchor at the end of the day. That, that's what uh, tip, systems, uh, tip systems lean towards, right? Uh, funnel all the all the guards into to the center and have your your center try to block shots and stop guys at the rim or in the mid range, right? Mm-hmm. What's what's interesting is the last game Sims played, he fouled out. Today, no personal fouls. Mm-hmm. I think Sims kind of got kind of gun shy around personal fouls. Okay, I think it's time to to unleash the beast. Maybe whisper in his ear and say like, hey. Maybe you should send uh, DeJounte Murray to the floor next time. Get aggressive. Right? Exactly. Zero personal fouls for Jericho Sims just leads me to think like, hey, you know, he's a little bit gun shy about putting uh, his hands on the guards yeah. when they're coming into the paint. Yeah. I think it's time to unleash him a bit. I know there's no no other backup center beyond, beyond Isaiah, but can't, can't have the game uh, go on with zero personal fouls. I think offensively, the Knicks are doing fine. We're shooting 60%. Yeah, more, oh, more, than, more than good it's enough. Fine. Yeah, more than good you enough. Know? So that, no worries there. Again, also, Randall, th- only 33 minutes. So I, I don't see too many people complaining about him having tired legs or yeah. anything like that. Yeah, so well, it's a matter okay. of us like putting our, our footprints on the game and saying, like, hey, you can't just do whatever you want to, to Trey and DeJounte Murray, ultimately, right? Yeah. And DeJounte Murray, no free throws today. That's a problem. Sometimes you got to send a message. That's play, all play a bit more physical, man. Appreciate the call, man. Appreciate the call. This is, this is my guy from the LES, isn't it? A- HF bro, I, th- I think. Pianos. Yes, that's it. that's right. That's right, man. That's right. You're, you're retired from pianos now. Dad life now. <laughs> yes, yeah. for sure. All that's right, man. long gone. Pre- appreciate it, it, man. Enjoy the weekend. <laughs> People still going in with names on the chat, Al. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't see the chat. You can't see the chat. Actually, I pulled up from time to time. I pulled up from time to time. Okay, okay. Because if I don't, if I if I leave it running, then this thing's going to crash on me. This All right, so, yeah, you, you know best. You know best. Um, but uh, I saw Quincy AC in there. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Lord. Yeah, well, look, I, I think he does have a point. You know, um, get a little bit more aggressive. You got six bullets to use. So get it in. 
you know and at worst you can go to ob at worst you can go to hartenstein and then you can go to ob ob randall ticket so you have options tibbs mentioned that he's you know confident with the depth at center he mentioned you know outside of mitch there's sims hartenstein mm -hmm. uh randall so you know let's utilize uh it's it's all based on the right opportunity with a small ball lineup. Like I don't want to yeah. see, you know, when we play the Bucks, I wouldn't say that's the best time to use small ball. You know, so a team like the Cavs when you have Jared Allen and Evan Mobley out there, I wouldn't say that's the best either. But yeah. When you have opportunities throughout the game, throughout the course of the game, like just be aware, put the put that in there. Wait, wait, wait a second. Not to not to cut not to cut you off. I'm watching this Lakers and uh. And 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 uh, I watch the Lakers and, and Grizzlies. Unk, aka Shannon Sharp, getting into it with 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 John Morant, Stephen Adams, and now John Morant's pops getting into the mix. Lakers Memphis is getting kind of active right now. What is going on? I I had the game on mute. What's happening? I don't I don't know. I don't know. With Shannon Sharp, aka Unk, he was not having it, man. He oh. was tight. About what? I don't know. I don't know. I bring him on CP, Jackson. I'm talking about it right now. You for all the information. Bro. I got you're the one. I called this out, bro. I got like three screens up right now. I got the gate. This game on mute. I got you on one screen. I got the, the you know the system set up on one screen. I, I'm trying to keep up here with, the, with what's going on. If somebody has a report on, on what's going on, let us know what's happening. Throw it in the chat. Throw please. it in the let chat. Us know. What did Shay and 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 John Moran get into it about? And then Josh Pops is coming over from 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 somewhere where he's sitting. You got Stephen Adams jumping into the mix, trying to protect his guy. Mm. Interesting. I think Unc was he was sipping too much Henny, man. He was on too much yak. You know what I mean? I his, his boy, his boy LeBron is in there. You know what I mean? He's happy. He's, he's courtside at Crypto Arena. He's away from Skip for the weekend. He's, he's away like, from I don't Skip for the weekend. <laughs> right, right. So he's feeling good, you know. He's feeling good. I got, I got, I got to know what what happened. Somebody on Twitter is about to, to about to spill the beans in just just a second. Just give it some time. Just takes time, man. Yeah, just, just give it a couple minutes. You know what I'm saying? That's why. That's why there's a love hate relationship with Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you mean? You can, well, you can. Find, it's it it gives you so much entertainment, but it can yeah. also be such. <laughs> It could be so negative too. Yeah, it can go both. It goes both ways. Oh, very, it's, it's, very it's, quickly. It's as toxic as it comes, man. Shout out my guy yeah. Andy in the chat. Shout out my guy Andy. Shout out to BetMGM, all the guys over there. Orlando from Georgia. How you feeling? Yeah. Bro? How you feeling, bro? What's up, man? I'm feeling, you know, not too good. Yeah. Not too good. What were were you watching? Were you, were you, were you watching this Lakers game? What happened with Shannon Sharp and John Morant, man? No, nah, I'm listening to you, man. And okay. I'm like, I'm going to the game on the 15th in Atlanta with the Knicks. I might have to pull one of those out with chills, bro. <laughs> this ain't going, man. It ain't working, man. And I just want to try to stick to the script because he is the problem, man. Uh, I got all the points in the world, but he is the problem. And it's because Leon should never hire Tibbs, man. Uh, you can't you can't do that, man. You know what I'm saying? Tibbs don't look at him as his boss. Even underlining every move he makes. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, the dude, like Alex say, I'm with Alex. He's not a real coach. He's not running no plays. He's not trying to get the best out of any of his players. You know what I'm saying? So he just sit up there stubborn, with, puffed up with pride. How much film you got you, you to gotta watch to, to realize your team can't break his own? You know what I'm saying? You got yeah. Trey coming up the court. You, you're not doing no type of press on this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like Like the other caller said, Dezonte Murray, he ain't even go to the foul line one time. Mm, mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like we get we get Cam. He like I didn't want Cam. I'm not playing Cam. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Give me Bullock. What? You know what I'm saying? Like you want <laughs> Bullock, man? He mad. He's still mad at Leon because he didn't sign resign Bullock. So he's yeah. like, go get me Bullock. Come on, man. This this ain't gonna work. Mitch Mitch, Mitch he's out tonight, and we yeah. give up 139 points. It's not. Tibbs defense is the players doing all they can do. You know, that's Randall doing all he can do. That's Brunson yeah. doing all he can do. And it's ISO. We ain't going to win nothing like that, man. Mm. We got to get rid of Tibbs, bro. Hey, we, we got to get rid of Tibbs. You know we, what I'm saying? We need you to we had the 15. kids on the bench last year. 
oh, Alex Burks, he's the best point guard we got. Now you got these guys out here looking crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> IQ, you know what I'm saying? He get that he get his first start, eleven assists. Is he back on the bench? No, nah, I'm scoring, bro. I'm a starter for real. Mm. Gotta stop playing with me. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. everybody for themselves. Because he's not he's not the coach. He's not making them a team. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what it is. He's the problem. Leon looking stupid. Wesley tried to tell him last year, man, fire this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. He didn't do it. We had Donovan, and he choked. So, I mean, I give him credit for what they done did since he's been here. We made it to the playoffs. But come on, man. This is the same coach you started. What, what, what What's the point guard we had? I don't forgot his name. Oh, Alfred Payton. For good reason. Alfred Payton, you started him all season. Yeah. Everybody know Rose should have been starting when he came in. You get to the playoffs and you bench this guy like it was a surprise. And it just messed up everything. Threw up the whole momentum. Mm. That's why we lost that series. You know what I'm saying? That and not having Mitch. But it's Tim. We got to get rid of him. Or somebody got to check him. Yeah. Because he killing, he killing people, man. You know what I'm saying? Cam ain't that bad to not get no no playing time. And like Alex said, yeah. you ain't running no plays for these guys. You ain't getting the best out of these guys. Come on, we gonna lose Obi. We gonna we we like to lost everybody over the summer. It might have been working for Donovan, but come on, you know they don't. Yeah, who you believe in? Hang hang in there, man. Hang, hang in there, bro. Definitely make That's sure you, you pull hey, up on the hey, 15th. This is the best show. Appreciate I always it. watch this show. I watch every game. Salute to you guys. Salute to the fans. And we just gotta hang in there, like you say, man. Yes, sir. That's oh, oh, hold it down, Orlando in Georgia, man. Holding it down. All right, back to this uh, Shannon Sharp and 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 what's ha- happening here. Shout out to JD for sending me the footage. He's got he's got he's got some courtside footage from Crypto Arena. We, we we still can't hear much of what's going on here. Yeah, this this video is on mute. Yo, whoever, JD's always on it, bro. Yeah, whoever whoever um whoever uh you know captured this video from Crypto did a, did a terrible job with the audio because we can't hear anything. Mm. But I, but I see Shannon Sharp mouthing, I bet you won't, to T. Morant, who people say is like an Usher clone. Um, hmm. So we're, try, we're trying to get to the bottom of this. You know what I mean? Knicks got watched in the second half. Uh, they, they, play, they play on Sunday. We'll get back to them. We, we're trying to do some investigative reporting here, see, what's, see what happened here in, uh, in Memphis and uh, between yeah, we're Memphis We're looking for more play. entertaining things at this point. We, yeah, we're looking for more entertainment, man. You know what I mean? That's, that's what we do here, man. <laughs> Oh man, Woo. how about play ratings, man? How you how you feel about play ratings tonight, man? Oh brother, how do you feel about it, man? You really uh, want to do this? Well, yeah, let's do it. It's been a while, man. People have been asking. Okay, you know. All right. So, since you got all the answers, let's start with Quentin Grimes. <laughs> let's start with Quentin Grimes here, man. So we'll do we'll do a start of five here, man. Woo! That was good. So Quentin Grimes, yeah. Mm. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with a three tonight, man. Ooh, whoa, yeah. Grimes hive, hold on. Yeah, man. He'll go with a three. Mm. It was bad. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. foul trouble, couldn't stay on the court. We didn't really get much. Out of him tonight, his defense was surely needed, especially when you don't have Mitchell Robinson. And the fact that, you know, even with a questionable call from a referee, the fact that he only got 16, 16 minutes tonight, I felt like he could have done a lot more. You know, you got seven field goals today, one four for seven for the field, two for five for the downtown, got you 10 points, but it felt like all for naught because he wasn't out there giving what we need the most, which was defense tonight. So, you know, I, I, I need... In a game like this, man, you you need to be you got to be aware of like when refs are calling things a little tight. Yeah, you got to adjust to that. So I agree with that. And it's a low score, but that that's what I'm going with tonight. Mm, the lowest score in KFTV history, people. Mark it down. January twentieth, eleven thirty p.m. Eastern time. Apparently, I got all the answers as, as you said. So mm, I'm trying to here. Man, well. Man, wow, that's tough, man. Guy, you know, I am I am Grimes Hive, but uh Yeah, you know, I give him I give him a four. It's cause I'm Grimes Hive. But it was a bad night for him. You know, uh as I said earlier in the show, 
Uh, Trey pulled out all the stops, and he fell for every single one of them, you know. And and he got caught. He he, he got caught lacking out there, and it just it it just it throws your rhythm off. And he just never recovered. And the 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 five point swing, which I don't think the flagrant was necessarily his fault, but he did before the flagrant. He had he had a boneheaded turnover, which led to Hawks points as well. And all of that really, I thought that really got the Hawks the momentum they needed to really take it to the Knicks. Yep. In 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 uh in the game, so I'll give my guy Grimes a four. You know, we'll bounce back stronger the next game. Mm-hmm. How about RJ? How about RJ, man? Twenty three points, nine of sixteen shooting, three of five from downtown, three rebounds, two assists, a steal. What you think about RJ tonight? I actually like the way RJ started tonight. Yeah. <clears throat> Very efficient from the field overall. Can't really complain on his offense. But defensively, that's where I'm looking for. So for tonight, thanks for the offense. Yeah. No defense. I'm going to go with the six tonight. Mm. I, need more, I need more defense, man. Look, you, we're looking at 139 points on the other side. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. So you Guys got to step up. There's no Mitchell Robinson. I'm looking for better defense. The last couple of games we've been seeing RJ struggle defensively, okay, whether it's been against Kyle Kuzma, Scotty Barnes. We come in here tonight more, you know, it wasn't as horrendous as those nights, but it wasn't anything to go riding home about either. So I'm going to give him a six tonight. Good offense. Defensive end needs to needs to step up. You're like, this team allowed 139 points, man. This is crazy. crazy. Tough. You're, tough, you're a tough scorer tonight, man. Tough scorer tonight. I'm angry, man. I'm giving him a seven. Mm. I'm giving him a seven. Um, you know, two things I look at up from RJ is his finishing in the paint, <clears throat> his efficiency from three, passing and defense. Those are the, those are kind of like the four areas that I'm watching him uh, uh, with him each night. I didn't. I mean, defensively, he had AJ Griffin most of the night, from what I remember. Um, now Griffin came off the bench. Who was the other guy that he had in his Hawks starting lineup? Um, was it was it Hunter? What? Well, yeah, it was mainly Hunter. Yep. All right, Hunter had, Hunter had, had twenty points. Yeah, twenty points out there. I give him a seven, man. I give him a seven. I I did I did think we're we're allowing DeAndre Hunter twenty points. Come on, man. <laughs> I give him a seven. I like oh. his off. I like his. I did like his offense out there. Offense was efficient. I am. I thought he was yeah, very efficient. It was nice. He finished yeah, he well. Went. I thought he, again with RJ. I I look for him to have more assists or more assist opportunities. And I thought on some of those drives, especially later in the second half, as they were trying to play catch up, you know, he 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 missed some opportunities there. Uh, but I give him a seven overall. I, I I did like RJ's game despite. Them, uh, them, you know, losing the game so badly on the defensive end. I did like RJ's game. How about Jalen Brunson tonight? Seven of 14, nine assists, 19 points for Brunson. Three blocks. The only play on the Knicks with three blocks, but three turnovers as well. What do you think about Brunson tonight? I thought, you know, offensively, fine. He had an f- offensively fine uh, game tonight, mm-hmm. facilitated pretty well. Thought there was a little bit more on the uh, on the on the table that he could have facilitated even more and found other guys going, gotten other guys going, but I thought it was good overall. Uh, this one's tough to think about because I know it's it's difficult to grade Brunson sometimes because I know defensively he's not going to be a stalwart. You just ask for for effort from him on the most part. Mm-hmm. Mm, this is tough. This is a tough one. Because mm. I'm leaning somewhere between six and a half or seven. Mm. I'm going to go seven. Just because the three yeah. blocks are, are pretty impressive for tonight. Yeah. I'm going to go with seven. Yeah, go me too. Seven. Yeah. Yeah, man, li- likewise, man. I'm, I'm going seven for Brunson. Um, You know, you, you look at these nights and you're like, damn, this was an off night for him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Offensively, yeah. right? You look at it offensively. Um, but again, defensively, you know, he's getting cooked like everybody else. And that's that is part of the problem. 
So can't go that high. And and this this goes back to why you need Grimes on the court because he hides that deficiency, right? Right. So that's why Fournier in that starting rotation from the jump never made any sense because you know Brunson's not going to be a defensive guy. You know Fournier's not a defensive guy. And then you're just going to put all that – and RJ's not the greatest at defense either. Mm-hmm. So then you're putting all that issue on Mitch, and then you see start to see where Mitch is truly needed. Um, so that's why it was important for Grimes tonight. But yeah, I think for like what you got to ask for Brunson for being efficient, the playmaking, even getting three blocks tonight, seven's just a fine number. Jericho Sims, ladies and gentlemen, poured in a career high, twelve points, along with eight boards. In his start tonight, Sims Hive. What did you, you think about Sims tonight, man? I like, I like Sims's game tonight. I feel like Tibbs is out there trying to run him like Mitch. Yeah, and he's just not like what Mitch can do is just so. It's very hard to replicate, and you see that tonight. Mm-hmm. You just totally see that. That's why I say he's the closest thing that we have. That's why I prefer him over Hartenstein. Mm-hmm. But even with that, I did like what he offered tonight. I thought defensively, he was pretty good. You know, he got you three offensive boards. Solid, re- solid, decent to solid rebounding tonight for eight rebounds. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I'm so used to Mitch just getting double digits on, on the glass. So I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with seven for Sims tonight. I like that. I'm going seven. Um, uh, You know, obviously with 60 points in the paint, you know, you're looking for him to be a a bit more of a presence there. Did get on the offensive glass with three offensive boards, um, nine boards overall. That was okay. I give him a seven. Yeah. I mean, the the issue with him being that safety valve is like when you don't have, like quickly has really good defense, but it's not like Grimes. So it goes back to like this is where like Grimes is so instrumental. So I think I'm gonna be I'm more curious to see when Grimes plays well and you have Jericho out there who seems to be who who was playing better than he did against Washington defensively. I like to see what that pairing looks like. I hear that. And lastly, Julius. Mm. As I said to start off the show, man, three things guaranteed in life: death, taxes. And Julius Randle absolutely dominating the Atlanta Hawks in the regular season. Shout out to Robert Randolph. Um, 32 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, 11 to 22 from the field, 3 of 10 from downtown. For Julius, what is his grade tonight? 7.5. Oh, man. Look, man. Offense, great. 32 points. You know he's going to do that against the Atlanta Hawks, as you said. Nine rebounds, six assists. Awesome. I look at the other guy that he had to guard on the other side. Collins, seven for eight, three for four from downtown, 17 points, nine boards. Come on, man. I need a a complete team effort. You don't have Mitch. I need a complete team effort. Listen, man. um, I got to give him an eight. All right. Because if it wasn't for him. This game would have been over a lot earlier. Because as I said, this game could have really gotten out of hand once Trey got that five-point swing on the flagrant, which led to an 11-0 Atlanta run. Things could have got out of hand, but Julius was in his bag and started cooking. I believe it was 14 points in that third. And he got them the lead. So, yes, I know. Everybody's going to get docked a point for defense. And so from Julius, I got to knock him from a nine to an eight. Okay. I got to give him an eight. Offensively, he was he was great tonight, offensively. I thought he was great tonight. I thought he was I great. Hear you. No, he was. For me, man, I just don't like losing to the Hawks. Me neither. I don't like it. I don't like it, man. What do you guys think in the chat? What are you giving Julius tonight? Let us know in the chat. And uh, let's get to... Uh, Edgar Edgar's got some updates on on Sharp and uh, and and Morant. Mm. Let, let's go to Cynthia to close this out, and then we'll go to Edgar for uh, for the finishing touches. Cynthia, how you feeling? Hey, good guys, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Let's mm-hmm. go. Hey guys, it's been a minute. 
Mm-hmm. Miss you guys. Yeah, man. Been a long time. I hope you're doing well, Cynthia. Yeah. Yeah, I just got some extra responsibilities now, so mm. I can't always catch the the show live. But yeah. I just want to tell you guys, um, Tibbs got to go, and we all mm. know that. We've been saying the same thing. Orlando from Georgia, caller of the night, man. Mm. He hit all points. Mm. Shout out to him. But honestly, guys, even when we were on that winning streak, I was like, okay, you know, we got a little happy. We We bleed orange and blue. But why are we happy? We ain't going nowhere. I mean, shout out to everybody else that's been saying that before. We're going to get outplayed, especially in the playoffs. Tibbs rotation of nine is ridiculous. And I think back, I was talking to, to Edgar about this while I was on hold. Remember, guys, when Tibbs was in Chicago and when he was in Minnesota, we heard the rumors playing too many people, wearing the players down. And there were people saying, oh, man, these people, you know, the players, are, uh, uh, they suck. They, you know, they, if they can't handle minutes, what's going on? Like it, it was kind of a, like a more like a negative spin on the players rather than the coach. But now we're seeing, we're seeing the same complaints that we heard about Tibbs. Now we're seeing it out on our very eyes here in New York. I appreciate Tibbs. He did turn it around in terms of the culture, getting the game more serious. But you guys know, even back when Ashley was on, Mm -hmm. when I first mentioned we got to think about firing Tibbs. Mm -hmm. I mean, template coaching, agree with you, Alex. So 100,000% about the ISO plays. He has no imagination. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, we know Jalen is short. There were times when Jalen, you know, the, the taller man was on him. Okay, I understand that if you double team, maybe you leave a guy open. But you saw the Hawks doing the same thing. I forgot at one point when they were all trapping Julius. Mm-hmm. Why couldn't we do that a little bit with, with Young or with, or with the other guy? I forgot his name that came from San Antonio. It's just like this guy has no playbook. He has mm-hmm. nothing. We're the laughing stock of the NBA. I mean, we've always been, you know, how – how the whole thing with the Knicks clicks and stuff, but mm-hmm. now more so because everybody knows Tip's play, playbook. And I, I'm at the point now, guys, that I just want to lose. I want to lose mm. like 10 in a row, keep losing, because the only way I see Tibbs getting fired is if we all go in there and we lose the losing streak and we start saying those fire Tibbs chants because, you know, that's going to make Dolan upset, you know, because – Orlando had it right, and I've been saying it. Tibbs is is Leon Rose's BFS. He yeah. ain't never going to get rid of him unless he feels his job is threatened. Yeah. The only thing that saved Tibbs right now was that little eight winning streak when we first went on it. He saved his butt, but he has no no game plan, nothing. I'm just sick of him. I want him out. I'm starting. I'm starting to like. Hey, Leon, get out. Get out, Leon, because mm. you ain't doing nothing here but serving your buddies. And and I'm tired of it, guys. Yeah. I'm just tired of it. Okay. Rapid fire, I'm out. All right, Cynthia, good to hear from you. Good to hear from you. Cynthia closing the show. Definitely appreciate that. All right, so so we got all right, so we got the update on uh on on uh on, on what happened here in, in LA. So 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 let's get to it. Shout out to uh, shout out to JD who who's sending us updates as we speak. I don't mm. think I don't think JD sleeps at all. I, I, he's he's literally like a Twitter nightcrawler. You know what I'm saying, my, bro? I'm getting like he is sending yeah. tweets at like all Three, odd yeah. hours of the day. Yeah. I'm like, yo, what what, what is happening over he here? He is a Twitter vampire. JD does <laughs> not sleep. But it, but here we go. So this looks like it started with uh, with Dylan Brooks. Okay. A known instigator, yep. borderline, you know, he, he he toes the line, if you get what I'm saying. So now he gets ejected, and this is according to Dave McMiniman of ESPN. Mm-hmm. Um, Brooks gets ejected, and, uh, and so that's how it all started. Now, Dave McMiniman gets the interview with Shannon Sharp in the tunnel at halftime. And John, Shannon Sharp says, they didn't want this smoke. They do all that talking and jockeying, and I ain't about that jockeying. He said it started with Dylan Brooks. I said he was too small to guard LeBron, and you know Shannon Sharp, he's the leader of the LeBron hive. Oh, yeah. I said he was too small to guard LeBron. Dylan Brooks says, family show you. 
Shannon Sharp says, family show you back. Hmm. And he started to come at, uh, at, 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 uh, at Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp says, you don't want these problems. Now John Moran comes in the mix. Steven Adams comes in the mix. Papa Moran comes into the mix. And then now you have a full b- b- blown melee here. Mm. So there it is. We we close we close the show with uh with the details. Important details, man. Ed- Edgar, how you feeling, man? Hey, what's up, CP? What's up, Alex? I Good mean, man. you pretty much you guys pretty much beat me to the punch right there. That's exactly what I was gonna tell you yeah. guys. Okay. Um, you know, n- number one, number one, LeBron stand. You know, I guess standing up for his guy. Yeah. Wanted to smoke for for with the entire bench mm-hmm. of the Memphis Grizzlies, Jaws Dad. But hey, aside from that, I'm just gonna say this: hashtag Fire Tibbs. Uh, <laughs> this guy has to go. There's no, there's no imagination. There's no creativity on this team. Uh, offense is, is is lackluster. There's not enough ball movement. Too much ISO. You know, you're basically playing a six man rotation, and you got other guys on the bench who, you know, at this point you don't even know if they can contribute or not because you don't even play them. You know, yeah. You got the whole camera the situation. I don't know what was said. I don't know what was done, but. The fact that you won't even play him uh, in garbage time is yeah. insanely telling to me. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's crazy. And look, look, now we're going to see a lot of people who were, you know, taking Mitchell Robinson for granted, saying, oh, you know, maybe we shouldn't have paid that much for Mitchell Robinson. Maybe we should have just let him walk, are going to appreciate Mitchell Robinson for what he brings to the table. And that's being one of the best offensive rebounders in the game, mm-hmm. one of the best defensive rebounders in the game, one, you know, tops at blocking shots, you know, erasing everybody else's mistakes. Because I tell you right now, Jalen Brunson, he's a stud on offense, but defensively, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I love the guy, but he, he leaves a lot to, a, a lot to um, sure. desire, you sure, know? Sure, sure, yeah. So his matchup, his matchup gets to the basket, you know, at will at so because of his size and, and whatever. And Mitch erases a lot of that. You know, Julius Randle isn't always engaged defensively, so Mitch erases a lot of that. Mm-hmm. RJ hasn't been the greatest on defense this season. So, again, Mitchell Robinson makes up for a lot of defensive, uh, you know, blunders yeah, yeah. from these guys. Okay. So, again... We're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna appreciate Mitchell Robinson a lot more. Hopefully he gets healthy soon. Mm-hmm. Throw that th- thumbs up for the for, for your boys for Absolutely. the show. Again, great show as always. Love you guys. Appreciate it, my guy. Appreciate it. That's Knicks Fan TV Edgar, the number one moderator on the show, man. Edgar, appreciate it. Appreciate your contributions, man. Big year for Edgar, indeed. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that was it, man. You know. And on a tough loss like this, as TM, as, as TM in the chat says, tonight's show turned into KFTMZ. <laughs> you, you know, when we have these tough losses, man, and... and entertainment. We, we got to provide an entertainment. entertainment value. So I had to kind of balance the Fire Tibbs talk and the Tibbs Stinks talk with some, with, with some levity, man. We had to, had to have some levity to the show. So so when, when, when everything is spilling over into in, in L.A., we got to do some investigative reporting here, Al. It's only right. It's, it's balanced. Right, CP. It's balanced. So, Look, yeah, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Anytime I could see the Lakers fail, man, <laughs> it is a great time. <laughs> it's a great time. Shout out to Unk. He's sitting there now. He's there watching the game, you know. Uh, he, he, he's being he's being cool now. But Unk, man, I, you know, in this media game, there's, there's very few people hotter than him. And, and he's mastered the art of attention and and um you know i i left that comment on on the shade room on a on a stephen a post that attention is the new gold man stephen a he he came on the fire for saying uh rihanna's cool but she's no beyonce and everybody's like oh what do you mean what do you mean and i'm like this is he's selling a book man attention is the new gold people so here's on courtside at crypto.com arena he's here to see his his boy lebron He's on top of the world, sipping Henny at the wazoo, and and things spill over. But he got the opportunity. He got his attention. He got the he got on video. ESPN showed it. Then he gets the McMiniman interview. 
and and he's got one of the most uh, he's got one of the best podcasts in the game right now you know what i mean unk knows yeah. man unk knows the only question i have yeah is how is skip going to be ready for this because you know he's going to have bring some sort of lebron yeah. hate into this yeah <laughs> and then you know he's got to he's got to interject and not let Skip get any get any words in. I'm just curious. Yeah. What is Skip prepping? What is Skip <laughs> for prepping for show? Monday, man? What is Skip prepping for Monday? So it, 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 this is this is just very very interesting times in in the media. You know when when you kind of just sit back and watch these things from from a bird's eye view for what it really is. Um, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. But anyway, Knicks lose. 139, 124. Starting to come back to the pack a little bit. Now losing three in a row. They'll head up to T Dot Toronto for the final game of the season against the Raptors. Let's see if they can bounce back, man. No Mitchell Robinson. Let's see how they adjust and weather the storm. Let me salute the rest of the super chats. Shout out to the Ryan Manuel, Chuck D, man. Welcome back, Chuck. He says, KFTV drifts us away from the L pain. <laughs> he says, thanks, CP and Alex. <clears throat> who else did i miss anybody else uh christopher ashley says let's go all the knicks have to do is step up while mitch is out we can definitely compete better than we showed tonight okay and, and that's it now uh, uh we have tomorrow night al we got a major game we got a major event going on tomorrow night mm. now you're a jet fan so you don't know too much about this stuff but oh it's, my it's God. called the divisional. Well, I, down. I, I I know, man, but I'm I'm trying to get you to the I'm trying to get you to the right side of New York football. It's called the divisional playoffs. You have the Giants, you have the Philadelphia Eagles at the link. Yeah, Eight fifteen start time. Yeah. Book Let's man. do it, man. Let's get a win. Book man, don't do that. I don't know if you. I just saw news today where it said that Zach Wilson was not respected. Uh, who, who's the? Oh my God, uh, Pat McAfee. Yeah, he had. Uh, I forget who he had on the show today. I forget what is what insider, but uh, or if it was insider or not. But they were like Zach Wilson lost the the whole confidence in the locker room. You know, no one respected his work ethic mm. to the game, mm. and that was the whole thing coming out of college. So now I hear this. Just kick me while I'm down already. Well, he was the wrong pick from the beginning with, like, you know, and, and it's not I mean, my guy, Sean Shepard, and all these don't Jets fans. Even, you don't have to tell me. The you don't have to tell me. I, yeah. As soon as I heard it, yeah. I wanted Justin Fields right. over Zach Wilson. Right. That's who I wanted. So this, I was what, like, this, this is what I'm saying. Now we're in the playoffs. Big Blue's in the playoffs. You're in town, right? We're going to hang out. We're yep. going to watch the game. Yep. Hopefully we could sell you a little bit, man. Ditch mm. the green jerseys and come over to the blue side of things, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just, just a suggestion. You you do it. You know, it's your life. You do what you do. I'm just providing a suggestion here. You know what See, I'm saying? See, go against my name. That would be against my <laughs> nature. You know that. I'm a Knicks fan. <laughs> shout out, shout out to Lash in the chat. Lash was up in uh, State Farm Arena in the suites shout tonight. Shout out to Lash. There's a Jets fan for us. Yeah, yeah. Shout out, shout out to Lash, man. Lash was in there. Uh, living lavish during this loss. But um, anyway, so to everybody in the chat once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Uh, remember that these shows are available in audio podcast format, all the major podcast platforms, so no reason to miss it. Uh, go to manscaped.com. Use promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. Go to prizepicks.com. For, uh, use promo code KFTV for an instant deposit match up to $100. And that's it, man. We're hoping for a win on Saturday. And then uh, we'll be back Sunday. Knicks versus Raptors, man. We'll see you guys, man. Peace. Let's go Giants, man. Peace.